here, villain. You can't run away from Masked Rainbow. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Well, I'm not a superhero, but... Who are you talking to? I'm not really a superhero, but I play one on TV. Well, I could. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about my top ten superhero movies without superheroes. So, without further ado, let us begin. Ah, now, top ten superhero movies without superheroes. And at number ten, American Hero. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Ah! Melvin, get up, man. Melvin is not like other people. We came to discover he had abilities to move objects using only the power of his mind. He has so much to offer the world, and has so much potential for him. Are you feeling okay? Sure, Mom. <laughs> Ever better. stopped beating for several minutes. You were certified dead. Lying there in the hospital, I realized something. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna start fighting crime, not committing. What you got is a gift. Slap your I'm gonna do whatever it takes. No more drinking, no more weed, pills. Melvin. I'm even thinking about stopping jerking off. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. No. Guys, the cops don't have time to deal with. These guys? Man, I'm a church. You started a war we can't fight. It's the only thing I can't do, baby. It's gonna be fun. Hey! Hey, pipe down! We're training over here, mother... This is a faux documentary-style film about a guy who happens to be telekinetic. He's getting tests done. He's has a lot of emotional problems. He takes drugs, he has, uh, has sex with lots of women. And uh, it's, it's not so much a character study, uh, because you can know what character he is. You realize pretty soon what kind of person he is. But it's a tragic character story until you know the third act when everything uplifts, <clears throat> which is why this film is at number 10, because the ending scene, the last part, is actually kind of a superhero style part. For the most part, this is not a superhero, not at all. He's not heroic. He does some pretty, <laughs> not bad things, but just sort of like questionable things with his superpowers. So that's number 10. Number nine, Chandu. We're going way back to the 1930s on this one. You call me, Master? Take this woman through the tunnel to the river. The boat is waiting. Come! Chandu! Come! What's the matter with you? Stop them! Stop those two!
This guy, Chengdu the Magician, which some of you might know, was a radio show as well as, uh, I believe, early pulp novel, comic book novel characters. And uh, he's basically Doctor Strange, although less mystical, more master of illusion type. It's a nice story, very lean. I think it's like 70 minutes. It's very quick. Um, the acting's good for the period. <laughs> It's uh, story's interesting. Uh, Bella Lugosi plays the bad guy, and it's fun. You know, if you can stand watching black and white movies that are old, you know, because I know a lot of people out there have not seen a movie past two thousand and ten. But um, you know who you are. Um, it's a fun movie. It's fun. Like I say, it's short. You get in and out. But again, it is vaguely superheroish because he's got. To, um, fight this evil magician. So, again, at number nine, Chandu. Number eight, Freaks. By definition, any freaks who are running loose are illegal. Abnormals are dangerous, and we can't let them live free. Chloe, hey, someone could have seen you. Sorry, Dad. You have to stay hidden. They look just like us, right? Where are you going? I don't want to hide anymore. You gotta be strong like your mom was. You knew my mom? I saw mom. What are you talking about? What did you see there? They took her away. She's not dead yet. What? Hiding is out. We are never getting out of here alive. We're coming out with a girl. What you done? I saved us! Where are you, mommy? I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was going to be some kind of weird horror film. And it is sort of a horror film. But this is what the new mutants want it to be. You've got this uh, uh, father and his daughter trapped in a house. And uh, not so much trapped, self-exiled into the house. And you, you, you're not sure what's going on at first. Then it's slowly revealed that these are people with superpowers. Um, more like mutants, though, in that respect. And um, as things unfold, you, you know, the story unfolds, you realize that this is true. But it maintains its horror aspects pretty much throughout the film. You know, at the end, there's a little, you know, rescue and we've got to stop the bad guys and things like that. Like, just like American Hero. And uh, so for that reason, putting that number eight. Number seven, The Unseen. Let's go. First part's easy. Small package, take it with, drop it off. I know on your way back, you're bringing a little something, something for me. Bob? What do you want, darling? She hasn't seen you in eight years. I want to see a ghost. So, you in? Why wouldn't you go to an abandoned mental hospital? I'm going. I want you to be her father. If you can't forgive him, what do you expect your daughter will do? Forget me. My grandfather was here. This place is supposed to be haunted. Oh, is Eva here? She didn't come home last night. Do I have to come down there, Bob? To your house? Look at yourself. You can't pass out there much longer. 
I have to find her. There's an old man who's crazy or hers. It's my dog. What do you know about young girls who go missing around here? Dad, I'm in here! What are you? I don't know. This is an interesting little film, independent, um, more like a drama, although perhaps you could say there are some horror elements to it, um, especially since when the guy is becoming invisible, it, it is a little bit grotesque, it looks kind of like he's rotting sort of thing, but he's not. <laughs> um, but it's a lovely little story about a man and his uh, daughter and how he loves her and wants to protect her, but he needs to stay away from the family because of what's happening to him. There's a little bit of a heroic action there at the end, but not really so much of a superhero sort of way. It's sort of a man and his daughter. Nice little story. The budget shows through a few times. Some of the acting is not bad, but just a little raw. So, good film, though. Worth seeing. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe. Number six, uh, Carrie. <laughs> It's the night of the senior prom. The Bates High School gym is alive with excitement. Everybody is there, even Carrie White, the girl no one likes. We're all sorry about this incident, Cassie. It's Carrie! And everyone makes fun of her. The girl who lives in that creepy house with her crazy mother. Help the silly woman see the sin of her days and ways. Show her that if she had remained sinless, the curse of blood would never have come on her. The girl with the strange power. If I concentrate hard enough, I can move things. But tonight, no one will laugh at Carrie. If you don't have a date to the prom next Friday, would you like to go with me? She's with the best-looking boy in the senior class. He's trying to trick me again. She'll be voted queen of the prom. You know, I can make sure that you don't hurt Carrie White anymore. For Carrie, it will be a dream come true. For everyone else, it will be a nightmare. <coughs> Carrie. <coughs> a new film by Brian De Palma. Based on the chilling bestseller. Starring Sissy Spacek, Piper Laurie, and introducing John Travolta in his first motion picture role. If you have a taste for terror, you have a date with Carrie. Now, a lot of you are probably saying this should be higher up in the list, but it's pretty much a horror film, except for Carrie and her powers, which are pretty much mutant-oriented. <laughs> and I've always teased my wife about this. They should have had a scene in the beginning where Charles Xavier comes on and takes her away to the school for gifted children. Um, and then it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have been a movie at all. So, But she basically is. She's a mutant with powers that... Um, she can't explain, and she's abused, and they all come out. I'm sure most of you have seen it. Great direction, great acting, um, good special effects. It's nothing really wrong with it at all, um, except that it just feels more of a horror movie. There's the, the, the element of her being telekinetic is more like a supernatural ability. So that one, number six. Number five, Dark Man. Who, no foolish heroics if you please, is Dark Man. They destroyed everything he had, all that he loved, everything that he was. 
now. Crime has a new enemy. And justice has a brand new face. I was afraid that you wouldn't want me anymore. Of course I still want you. The good news is that I know who's behind our little troubles of late. Finish it. He has the power to look like any man. Let's do a both sons of witches! But he is unlike any man. I gotta tell you something about me. He's a cockroach. You think you're killing? And he pops up someplace else. In the darkest hour. Julie, who's the real monster here? There's a light that shines on every human being. But one. From director Sam Raimi. Dark Man. This is Sam Raimi's first step into big budget action. Um, yeah, it, it, it was before um, Army of Darkness, so although that one, the, the budget of Darkness was much bigger than the budget on Army of Darkness. Um, and this is a, su it, it, the style is very superhero-y. But again, he's not really a superhero, it's more like a Phantom of the Opera type of character, you know, trying to hide, and he's got these bad guys after him, and he's not really a heroic figure. Very good movie, director, director, yeah, <laughs> excuse me, directorial-wise, very, very fun, very interesting. Acting-wise, pretty good. I think Liam Neeson was a little miscast. He, he's not really good at the more, um, cartoony moments, unlike Larry Drake. Um, but still, entertaining, very entertaining film. Number four, Purge Anarchy. In five seconds, you will experience anarchy. You can't go out there. You know how dangerous it is. This won't bring him back. It won't make you feel any better. Don't do this. It's late. You need to leave. Traffic is building rapidly downtown as citizens rush to get home before commencement. If you're not purging, we advise you to get off the streets as quickly as possible. It'll soon be a war out there. System announcing the commencement of the annual purge. At the siren, all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 hours. All emergency services will be suspended. Your government thanks you for your participation. What is this? Tonight allows a release. America, a nation reborn. Just drive, just drive. Stick to the plan. Thank you. Follow me. As long as we keep moving, we're okay. People like us, we don't survive tonight! Oh my god, where are they taking us? <laughs> this is the last purge of the evening. The bidding will start at 200,000. remember all the good the purge now a lot of you are saying is how is this a superhero movie at all well let's just look at it like not just a bunch of people involved with the purge we got a bunch of people and the punisher frank grillo is the punisher in this movie no doubts um just to watching the beginning 
And especially in that near the third act, second act, third act uh, section when he's, uh, we got all the rich people standing over and watching him in the maze. That's flat out Punisher stuff. So it's just, uh, it's not that, I don't love that film that much, but I just love watching him, imagining him as the Punisher in that. So for that reason, it's at number four because I just love the character of the Punisher. He just pretty much nails it even though he's not the Punisher. Number three is a nice little independent film in from France or Belgium, I'm not sure, called Vincent. Tu diras rien, hein? Faudra rien dire à personne. Ok. Et tu peux le refaire Oui. guy who can breathe underwater and when he gets wet he has power superpowers more like super strength uh, endurance things like that and this guy is just some guy that's just trying to live his life um, living under the radar he gets exposed and um, uh, tries to get away run away and you got people chasing him uh, no superhero stuff at all um, except the ending is really neat because you really get to see him use his powers but again not a superhero movie not an action movie, so, well, slightly, but it's more of a, a quaint little drama, a light drama. Uh, very, very entertaining. I suggest you get that one, too. Number two, The Guest. Can I help you? Mrs. Peterson? Yes? My name is David. Mrs. Peterson, I, uh... I knew your son, Caleb. I was with him when he died. That's me. You know Caleb? Yes, ma'am. We're pretty close. Yes, ma'am. He wanted me to tell you that he loved you. Thanks. He asked me to check on y'all. And so... We're gonna be good friends. What happened? I got into a fight with some guys at school. I'll teach him some self-defense when he's feeling up to it. What are you gonna do? Nothing bad. For the damages. Never let anyone pick on you. Here, you can keep it. Miss Peterson, are you sure you're comfortable with me staying here? I think it could be a good thing for us. You know, I promised Caleb I would do anything I could to help your family. But I'm afraid I haven't been fully honest with you. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't been here. Really, Mrs. Peterson, it's no problem. Or what I like to call when Captain America breaks bad. 
Again, like uh, Frank Grillo as the Punisher, Dan Stevens is Captain America if Captain America were messed up in the head. Uh, he sells the movie. Uh, the, other, the other acting is good. The directing is very, very good as well. Very sharp, very crisp. The story's good. Uh, has some nice little twists in there. Um, but it's just his performance that really makes the film. And let it just... It's not the best directed film on there. It's not the best story. But his character is just like... We got, we get, probably the only film we'll get to see with an evil Captain America in. So, for that, it's number two. And number one, which a lot of you will probably say, hmm, is Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee. Roper. Williams and Lee, the deadly three, penetrate the secret chambers of an evil island empire. What do you know about Han? He lives like a king on that island, totally self-sufficient. A fortress without walls, protected by an invincible army that needs no ordinary weapons. This is Enter the Dragon. The first martial arts film produced by a major Hollywood studio. John Saxon is Roper. He was in it for the money. U.S. karate champion Jim Kelly as Williams. He was there because he had no choice. Black Belt Hall of Fame undisputed martial arts champion and international film star Bruce Lee. His job was to get them out alive. I'm hoping you'll join us, represent us in the United States. You want me to join this? Roper, Williams, and Lee. Just when they think they've broken the secret of the island, they find there is no escape from the inscrutable Han. Warner Brothers presents Enter the Dragon, where the world's greatest martial arts athletes meet the ultimate challenge with the most ancient and deadly of weapons. The human body. Enter the dragon from Warner Brothers. This is a superhero movie, but Bruce Lee is not a superhero, but he plays one in real life. Here's the guy with the phenomenal sense of, you know, physical attributes that made him almost like a superhero. And for those of you who think it was all acting and fake, do some research. N was not. But so I mean, some people call this a James Bond type of film and it's certainly the plot is certainly James Bondy but as he doesn't use gadgets or anything like that and it's more of an action film low budget action film it is definitely a superhero movie but he, again he has no superpowers although it sure seems like it fast crisp not well not very well directed uh, the director would go on to direct Jim Cotta which <laughs> if you, those of you who know it, need I say more? For those who don't, watch it. Uh, and the acting around him, around Bruce Lee, is not very good. I mean, he is, his acting isn't that great. But uh, it's got a lot of crisp energy and a lot of good kung fu action. So that's it. My top 10 superhero movies about superheroes. Now, if anyone on there has another film that they want, they thought I neglected or, or would want to perhaps have me talk about it, if I ever do this again, leave it in the comments and uh, let's see if I can agree with you or not. Okay, well, that's it because I got to go catch myself a cat shark. See ya.